Welcome to Maths for All. I'm Ashling Flynn. This is functions 1.6, exponential functions. So you may have heard of exponential growth. It's when we uh, talk about something um, growing very quickly, taking off. And at the time of the making of this video, uh, we're in the midst of uh, level 5 coronavirus restrictions in Ireland. Um, so it got me thinking about exponential growth. It's the perfect example. This was an article from the Irish Times uh, during the first lockdown in 2020. So coronavirus, what does exponential growth mean? And it's by a mathematician called Peter Lynch. And he writes, in its initial stages, the coronavirus pandemic grew at an exponential rate. Okay, so we all know what that means, but we're going to look mathematically at what it means today. What does this mean? The number of infected people in a country is growing exponentially if it increases by a fixed multiple each day. So increases by a fixed multiple is R each day and you may hear about the R number in the news. We'll look at that now. If N people are infected today then R times N are infected tomorrow and the size of the growth rate R determines how rapidly the virus is spreading. An example should make this clear. Suppose that on day zero there is one infected person. One is enough to start an epidemic. We assume, and this is for simplicity, that an individual is infected for just one day. Okay, so that's not really real life, but that's to simplify the example. Suppose each inf infected person transmits the virus to two others and then recovers. After one day, there are two infected people. After two days, there will be four. After three days, eight with the number doubling each day and that is known as exponential growth with a doubling time of one day and an R number R equals two. So you may hear in the news that they want to get that R number down by imposing restrictions. So um, this is the graph that went with the article and the green shows daily cases with no intervention and what you'll see here is the exponential growth. Okay, so you will see the numbers rising rapidly. Okay, so it starts off with quite slow, small numbers and rises rapidly and that's your exponential growth. Okay, so notice there is, it does max out. Since the population is finite, so there's fixed population and the vast majority of people recover, the graph the graph of the number of infected people is bell-shaped. So it grows to a maximum and then declines. This is after people have, so the other side is after people have contracted the virus and recovered. It starts to um, dwindle again. Okay, and with interventions, this is what the government intend to do when they impose restrictions to stop people moving and mixing and we called that all the time to flatten the curve okay to keep the numbers down so now i want to bring you back to what you learned about uh, number patterns okay and sequences and series and an exponential growth um, behaves like a geometric series so some of us recall school mathematics lessons on geometric series each term of such a series is multiplied by a number r to get the next term. We may even remember the formula for the sum of the first n terms of the series it involves r raised to the power n, so r multiplied by itself n times. So this is for each term, so day to day term, this is what we had. Okay, so you start off with a, which is the first, the number of cases on the first day then you multiply by r however many times okay um, in functions we write it like this the function of x equals a multiplied by b 
to the power of x. So a will be multiplied by b many times. Okay, so this would be the, the starting number of cases, for example, and b takes the place of r in this case, and you'd multiply it by r for each subsequent day. Okay, and sometimes instead of f of x, uh, to describe what you put onto the graph, uh, the variable y is used, so y is a function of x. So I'll just see that as well. Okay, so uh, here we're asked to graph the function f of x equals 1 um, multiplied by 2 to the power of x in the domain from 0 to 7. Okay, so this is the sim simplified case of our virus. The number 1 represents the first person that has it, okay, on day 0, and the number 2 represents the reproduction factor of 2. Okay, and x will be how many days? All right, so uh, here I've made a table with my input as starting from on day zero. So this is what day it is, day zero, uh, day one, two, three, four, down to seven. Okay, and here is my function. Um, above we had one times 2 to the power of x. Well, of course, 1 times anything is, is itself, okay? Now, the first thing we have to note on day 0, it's 1 times 2 to the power of 0. Now, anything to the power of 0 is value 1, okay? So, you'll do that when you study indices. So, anything to the power of 0 is 1. x to the power of 0 is 1. Okay, and so on day zero we had one person, so that's our output, and I've also included a column for the total, so adding um, the next day's cases and so on, so accumulating the numbers there. So uh, we've continued down the table each time substituting the input value, how many days for the power of x, it means how many times should you multiply by 2? Okay, so on day 1, it's 1 times 2. On day 2, it's 1 times 4, which is, of course, 2 times 2. On day 3, it's 1 times 8, so 2 times 2 times 2, and so on. Okay, and you can see that the numbers start to rise slowly and then more rapidly as you get towards the end. And the same can be said for the total. Okay, and here's a graph of those. On the orange line, we see the exponential function for the daily cases, so it's doubling each day. And on the green line, I have the totals, so that's rising rapidly also. Okay, so here we have just nothing to do with the coronavirus, just the function 2 of x. And I included this because I wanted to see the domain from negative into the positive. So we have to graph the function f of x equals 2 to the power of x in the domain from when x is minus 2 up as far as 3. So here's my input. Here, there's my x. And each time the x takes place of the power. Okay. All right, you have your calculators to do this, and I'll show that in a minute. But um, just to link it in with any lessons on indices or powers, remember that a negative power is the same as writing 1 over the positive power. So 2 to the power of minus 2 is the same as 1 over 2 to the power of plus 2. Okay, and 2 to the power of 2 is 2 squared is 4, so that's 1 quarter or 0 0.25. Um, 2 to the power of minus 1 is 1 over 2 to the power of plus 1, if you want to write it in. That's a half, which is 0 0.5. The next one, 2 to the power of 0. So anything to the power of 0 we already discussed was is 1. 2 to the power of 1 is itself 2. 2 squared and 2 to the power of 3 is 8, and so on. And this is the um, graph of that function f of x equals 2 to the power of x. Okay, so let's see it graphed. When the input is minus 2, the output was 
zero point two five a quarter. When the input was minus one, we had a half. Now, notice this point here. So any function of this nature will t pass through the number one on the y-axis. Why? Because when x is zero, and x was the power, anything to the power of zero is one. Okay, and that will be useful in some of our questions later on. Okay, and then we had one, two, and we had two, four, and so on. Now, the next slide shows how to generate that table on your Casio calculator.